Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 20 for our Godot action RPG series. In this video, we're going to be adding in a camera that will follow our character around. And this is actually going to be the second to last video in the series. The next one will likely be the last one. So we're getting close to the finish here. Uh, we've learned a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Let's get started. Come into your world and we're going to attach a new camera 2D node to our player. And once we do that, you can see we get this little border around the player like this. And uh, but this little border is really thin. It's kind of hard to see. And so if we want, if we run the game also, the camera doesn't actually follow our player still. So, and it's not even actually running, basically. This camera isn't actually even being used. So in order to use this camera, what we need to do is turn on current. If you come over to its properties, that increases the border here, makes it thicker. And then when we run the game, we can see that the camera now follows our player. Okay. So we also are going to want to increase our background size here. Something like that. Maybe. Got it centered, so that's a bit odd, but that's okay. That works for now. We'll save. And run the game again. So now the camera follows our play around. It's pretty easy to set that up. The camera feels a little bit harsh because it follows our player exactly. And you can see that our hearts don't follow the camera right now. Also, if we die, the camera gets destroyed. The camera that is attached to our player also gets destroyed. So then it resets to the default camera. It looks a little bit awkward, right? Like if we run the game and we come clear over here and have this enemy bat kill us, then the camera jumps clear over here when we die. So we need to fix some of these problems. So the first problem that we're going to fix is the hearts. We want to make sure that our hearts follow the, follow the camera. And the way that you do this is by creating a new node and creating a canvas layer node. So the canvas layer node, this node will follow the camera around on the screen and then we can set our hearts or our health UI to be a child of that canvas layer node like this. And then when we run the game, that's all you have to do. The hearts now follow the camera around properly on the screen. Now the camera being a little bit jarring is an easy fix too. We can come into the camera properties and we can turn on smoothing. And you can see now the camera is a little bit less jarring when we're moving around in the room. And you can play with uh, some different properties in the project settings as well. Some people prefer the look with, so there's a couple things to keep in mind if you feel like your camera is a little bit jittery. And uh, so part of the reason that the camera can be jittery is because the camera is moving at a sub pixel amount. So it's moving less than a pixel at a time. And I don't mind that look for this. Like I think this looks pretty good and you're never gonna get anything 100% perfect. But there are a few things you can consider. Number one, you could consider setting your camera's process mode to be physics. That way it updates on the physics frame, which would, if your player is moving on the physics frame, then it would, it would match the player. Um, I personally prefer the look on the idle frame. Uh, I don't really see much of a difference between these two, actually. You can also check in your project settings to your rendering where's our rendering quality you can turn on use pixel snap and this should theoretically make your camera snap to perfect pixels and that's a completely different look um, as well 
And so that might be something you want to consider too. So I prefer just kind of the default settings for it. Uh, and I'm not going to go into uh, so different solutions because I'm sure there are other solutions to these problems as well. But those are kind of the, the ones that you might try for yourself, see what gives you the best result and stick with that. So now that we've got camera smoothing on, the last thing we need to fix is the issue where our character can be, when the character gets killed, the camera jumps clear back to here, which just looks super awkward. So the way that I've ended up solving this problem is by moving the camera outside of the player, right? But that means that the camera won't, will no longer follow the player, right? If the player moves, the camera no longer moves with it. Now you could use a script and attach it to the camera to make it follow the player, but there's a node you can use for this too. So let's attach a node to our player. It's called a remote transform 2D node. And this node, what it does is it makes, you, you give it a path to a different node and it makes that node follow it. And so we wanna give it, we wanna assign a path and choose our camera and now, Whenever this remote transform node follows our player around, the camera will follow us as well. See, and it follows just like it did before. However, if we end up dying over here, then the camera isn't being destroyed. The camera is still in the game. It's just no longer following the remote transform. And so now the camera stays where it was when we died. And that's gonna be it for this video. It's a really short video, but I think it has some useful little things to learn like the remote transform and using the camera. And there's a lot more involved in cameras that I recommend you experiment around with. You can limit the camera to the view. You can add, uh, you can add a drag margin and you can and turn it on with these right here. You can set your zoom amount so you can easily zoom in and zoom out with the camera. Like if we do 0 0.8, 0 0.8 here, this will zoom our game in, make it significantly closer to the player. And you can, you can mess with those properties as you see fit. So if we do 1.5, 1.5, that's gonna be a huge camera for our player, kind of zoomed out pretty far. And you can play, play around with those. So I think we learned some cool stuff in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you all later.